How are we doing, all my Dukes and Duchesses? Welcome to Dukes and Duchesses, the podcast. I am your Swedish-American rapper, Wilhelm Duke. This is the first lady of the House of Duke, Candace Elise. What's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? And we have a very fun episode for today. Lots of stuff to discuss and talk about. Real quick, shout out Diane Randall of Plant Based Curious. Uh, we Podcast are here? sipping a little coffee out of a little product p- placement. One of her official mugs. So shout out Diane Randall and Diane Randall Consults and Plant Based Curious. Now, uh, for today, the first thing we wanted to get into was recently the CEO of Instagram, Adam Mosseri, was um, recently on a podcast. I think it's called Twenty k or 20k club or i'm don't quote me on that we'll put the official podcast that adam Mosseri was featured on um in the video or in the description but anyways basically he was talking a little bit about what makes the instagram algorithm tick and it was really kind of eye-opening and a little annoying shocking slash disappointing that basically Meta wants to take Instagram in the direction of basically a messaging app. Mm -hmm. According to Adam Osseri, the CEO of Instagram, the majority of what people are doing is DMing DMing and stories. And then he also said that every time you post a video now, it's uh, what was the he used a specific phrase to explain how it's not um, as worth or as valuable as sending a message or putting a story. Basically, every time you post a photo or a video, it hurts. It hurts the algorithm. Well, so it, well it, yeah, I mean, it hurts your reach. Um, basically, after hearing his interview, it just made me not want to use the app, to put it quite, you know, literal. Um, he down. Well, I think he also didn't understand. I think he didn't understand like who exactly is um, consuming. Um, who's using the app? He just kept talking about like teenagers. The teenagers DM each other all the time. That's why, yeah, DMs is well, like bigger. He than said that um, one reason why we're not seeing our friends in our feed is because he was saying that our friends don't, don't post, post and to that's our not feed. True. And I just yeah, I found that odd. Like, well, what do you mean my friends don't post to the feed as much? That's obviously demonstrably false if you because every time we we have to like go search one of our friends and see all of their previous posts right well that we haven't seen to get caught up well it's definitely changed again because i I remember originally if people would post you would literally see those posts from that day now right it wasn't it was in a chronological you're seeing stuff from two days five days ago even a week ago yeah um you're not seeing your friends post so it's like i have just for an example, I have two friends that have over 20K followers, and they literally explained to me, Candace, just because you have more followers doesn't mean you're going to get more interaction. Um, one of my friends that just had 20K, he actually, like, deleted it. He, like, didn't even want to do um, – he didn't want to post anymore because he says that he was only getting 1% interaction from 20K which was odd because when he had less followers, he was getting more interaction. And that's what I was like, yeah, if, if you just have people just on your page who don't actually interact with you, do what I did, delete they ass. You know what I mean? Like, what's the point? Yeah. If nobody's interacting with your post, that hurts, that hurts your algorithm. So if you have 2,000 people out of 5,000 people that don't interact with you, what's the fucking point? You know what I mean? And thank God it has, um, they break it down with like least interacted. So if like you're my least interacted, you probably got cut. Oh yeah, yeah, the app does that now. But um, yeah, go check out that interview with Adam Mosseri. It's really interesting and eye-opening and kind of, again, it's just disappointing because all of the things he explains about with IG make you go like, hmm, well, it's not what it used to be, and no. the direction that it's going seems to be they want to turn it into just simply a messaging app where you can share moments of your life and what's going on, but it's not really a place to be publishing and curating interesting creative content because 
if the creative content doesn't line up with what the algorithm wants, it's not going to go very far. Exactly. What the algorithm wants. Yeah. And they're focused, I tested that, too. And they're focused on stories. Trends and trends. So, and trends. So, if you're, so. so if you just want to, like, create something really dope and bring something new to the table, the algorithm might not like that, if, especially if it's not a trend. And I was um, just doing a little bit of a uh, – just – just kind of like I use my Instagram too to just see and practice uh, what's changed with the app. And like if you're posting free Palestine, you're probably going to get left. You know what I mean? But if you're posting something super stupid or super trendy or like everybody else is doing, the algorithm's going to take it. You know what I mean? Sure. It doesn't. I'm learning that the algorithm doesn't want you to be different. It wants you to do what Becky did. You know what I mean? Or, or Frank just did. And, and it, the trends. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, uh, moving on to some little bit of pop culture, hip hop culture right now. Cole's response. There was. So Kendrick, Kendrick started the diss by having a few lines on the record like that by Future, Future, or by Metro Boomin featuring Future and Kendrick Lamar. And then um, J. Cole dropped an entire project out of nowhere called Might Delete Later. And then he had a few songs that were dissing Kendrick and one in particular. And then after that, a few days of that ruminating, uh, he was performing live in front of a huge stadium audience, and he apologized for dissing Kendrick Lamar and said that that was probably the lamest quote verbatim, probably the lamest shit he'd ever done in his life. And I guess the question is, Candace is... It's all marketing and branding, well, guys. Well, the question is, though, is is hip-hop maturing and going in a positive place and rap beefs are becoming that, or is this, yeah, is this all for show and tell? It's and, all for show and, and tell. Marketing. It's all, the come on. Once you start seeing how the industry is and where it's where it's going, you'll you'll see more of of these um these musicians kind of grabbing at like just trying to figure like quickly trying to figure out something to to stay relevant or stay um in the public eye in a way and disses have always been used for that so when j j cole knew what he was doing he i i I honestly even the apology is kind of lame and whack it's like you did it um you spent the time to make the song though i just find that and the album and the album, and then to take it and back the when you're in front called, of people. Well, it's weird because it's huh. like, okay, so he apologizes to Kendrick Lamar, but the name of the entire project was Might Delete Later. So I feel like he was making the project anticipating that he would apologize. Like, he made the project... Right. He made the project knowing he would apologize later, or else why would he call his project Might Delete right. Later? That infers that he kind of had, like... An idea, that an idea gonna that happen. he was going to yeah. apologize and be anxious, feel sorry, feel guilty about. Hence, might delete later, and might delete later comes from like when any of us are making a flagrant social media post that maybe it's about something social, political, or personal, but it's kind of shock value. You'll see at the end of some of those right, posts, like, might delete later because it's so bad that like I might feel bad about this and I'll take this down for my socials later. Right. Um, but then he goes on to apologize to Kendrick. So that just makes me think that that was his idea. That was his plan from the get go. Right? right. From the well, start. We don't take back our disses. Like, are you going to take back your McDonald? I diss Tom McDonald. Um, and regardless of whatever I, I even think of the diss, I stand on that shit. Hello. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> all right, moving on. Um, it is important to stay independent in the film and music industry, uh, especially with all of these, new cases and allegations of sexual assault. I'll just say this. We'll just talk about this one angle. Um, When someone even like Alan Richson, who is a big, massive man, uh, I'm 6'6", but he's he's about a 6'4", really wide guy, football player body. He was in that uh, football sitcom show called Blue Mountain State, which is really funny. But uh, yeah, Alan he Richardson. He has experienced sexual assault and to big the point guy where he experience- wanted to yeah. kill himself, guys. He wanted to kill himself, but he was so grateful that his children um, stopped him from doing that because he was literally done with with everything. Right. And you can kind of tell he's going through some shit. Yeah, maybe. Um, well, he looks just, a little. You, you know, know, he's depressed. getting. He's well. He's getting some bigger, major motion picture roles he is. lately. And it's just, it was crazy. Batman, I hope you get Batman, bro. 
he's hinting at a possible yeah Batman suit up. Not obviously the Robert Pattinson universe Batman is its own thing, but Alan Richson might be playing Batman in some other narrative story. Anyways. But um, I would choose him over Pattinson. Pattinson wasn't doing it for me. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a, that I'm a, well, I'm an Alan Richardson fan, yeah. but um, but no, it's it's crazy because when we're seeing all this stuff about like R. Kelly and P. Diddy and uh, you know, Quiet yeah, on Set, flex, Nickelodeon, <laughs> uh, you know, Nickelodeon, all these different things, and then all of a sudden you see Alan Richardson pop up, and it's like, oh wow, someone of his size and physicality, muscularity, whatever can be sexually assaulted it's like well makes you think maybe being completely independent and outside of the mainstream industry is the way to go because just coming from how many my thing is like how many people have to come out and say like yo 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 even rebel wilson is coming out 10 years after bore the borat movie saying uh sasha baron cohen was a dick and was saying crude things and right, right. being a weirdo on set well now so, isla fisher is getting a divorce from sacha well Barrett they got Cohen divorced last year secret hiddenly but yeah it's just coming oh, out now well, but all this stuff, well people are book. like well it makes sense that isla fisher is getting a divorce from sacha yeah. Barrett Cohen, considering all the weird stuff he's up to on sets with someone like rebel wilson jay-z's right? next <laughs> sorry Jay Z, well, your ass know. is next. We, oh, I know. It's well, only I mean, a matter of time, guys. There's I, enough it's shit a on the of internet. Time, but but back to the back to the you know the original point is that all those you people know, you call crazy about four years ago talking about this shit, um, coming and saying, oh, Jaguar Wright's crazy. You know, th- th- Wendy shout Williams out Jaguar is crazy. Jaguar Wright, shout out Orlando Brown. Isn't that funny that all no, this but, stuff is true? But back back to the original point though, because of all of these things, this is why we do recommend staying completely independent, doing your own projects, not worrying about what the big stuff and whatever is going on over there. You know, focus on the people in your network that bring you value, that you bring them value, and go hard on those projects, on those films, on those records, on those series, whatever whatever it is. You know, and because, I'll say this. Because clearly all of these people get lost in the sauce. If someone like Alan Richardson can yeah, experience that, it's yeah, just like, essayed. maybe yeah. stay indie. Right. Um, another thing that I want to cut is just, if you do meet people in the industry, just listen to what they say. Really listen. You know what I mean? Because it's very telling right off the bat, like if they're realistic or if they're just full of smoke, full of air. Um, yeah, yeah. No, like 100%. I'm not gonna get into names, but I'm just I'm just gonna say no, that if somebody comes up, comes up to you and is like, oh yeah, I worked for P Diddy and worked for R Kelly. Guess what? Get the fuck away from me. I don't care. All right, we might have to cut that, but. Um, all right, yeah, moving on. Weirdos. Uh, top 10 rappers to look out for. Yeah, babe, we're going to, that's, too, you already said it before. <laughs> I didn't but, specify it, though. Yeah, if you're, all right, I'm but, just saying, weirdo. No, we're fucking gonna, weirdo. We're gonna, okay, we're going to cut that. Gonna cut I'm making that, Eric yeah, fucking. Yeah. No, 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 we're good. All right, uh, moving on. Top 10 rappers to look out for in Chicago. Well, this is, uh, I mean. Well, this is more your thing. I well, guess, this like. Is gonna, this is just going to hurt. People, well, it's gonna piss people uh, the fuck regardless, off. But let me just here. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna write down on my. This is. I don't have any. I don't have any names in my phone. I'm, I have to write these names from. Right. What I'm saying is this is all coming off the top. I didn't know this was a topic. Ten rappers to look out for in Chicago. Besides myself, Wilhelm Duke, because you're watching Duke's Duh. Duchess's podcast. If you're watching this podcast, go check out my catalog. I have four albums out. I have over thirty singles. I have a new three-track single coming out this Friday with in collaboration with the producer artist Owell oh, well. out of Chicago. Uh, boop, but boop, boop, top ten, <laughs> I hate the air. I horn. know, but that's why I do right, it. Top ten rappers to look out for in Chicago. The first one I'm going to say is Dean Akbar. I wish I could speed rap, bro. Uh, <laughs> I can't, but I love it. I love what you do. Babe, you're funny as fuck. Impersonations. Um, anyway, but, uh, no, uh, <laughs> I can't anyway. speak rap for shit. Anyway, shout out Dean Akbar. Go check out uh, The Real Rap God. He's got a, a project out called uh, Rap God, and then he's got one coming out called Long Overdue. Go check out Dean Akbar. Second, uh, we're going to have to throw in uh, White Noise. Love this dude's uh, charisma and his consistency. Charisma, work ethic, consistency, work ethic. business acumen. Yeah, dude is a uh, great dude to work he with. He can rap. He can bar out. 
he's already Look out. done more work than a lot of rappers in the scene have in in such a little amount of time um yeah, two albums plus singles. He's only been doing this two, three years, so to already have that work out, and it's good enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not like some of these where some artists start out like this music. is And I'm good. really hard so, on white rappers. Like I'm so hard on white rappers. So yeah, homie came correct. So shout out white noise. White noise. Uh, number two, I'm gonna have to throw in there where I'm to say young tact. Uh, shout out Young Tact. Um, known him for a while now in this Chicago rap game. Uh, super good dude. Super cool guy. Uh, large catalog as well. Go check out Young Tact. We have a song together called Getting To It. Mm-hmm. Uh, the music video is a little Cheech and Chong. Uh, shot by Adage. yours truly. I'm going to shot, shot by that Candace in Elise, here, Video you know? Sushi. Hire we'll we'll put uh, Getting To It. Um Oh, and by the way, I have songs with Dean Akbar, White Noise, and Young Tact, by the way. So go check all those so, out. Yeah, obviously uh, they're on the Speed list, right? Speed Force with Dean Akbar, Wilton Muggsy with uh, White Noise, and then I got Getting To It with Young Tact. And Young Tact's on the hook on that one. That's a really dope song. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so that's three rappers. We got Dean Akbar, White Noise, Young Tact, fourth. Who's the fourth? Who's the lucky number four? <laughs> Like who out here getting it? Or we're gonna have to go. Or we're gonna have to go with Double Entendre. I fucks with Double Entendre. He's really good. Yeah. So what you gotta say about Double Entendre? Uh, Double Entendre is super dope. Uh, check out his catalog. He's got, he's got hella projects out as well. I've done a few shows with him. He's a fast rapper. His flow is crazy. Uh, he raps. He's a real MC. Raps for real. You know, not you know show tracks or beats. Not over his uh yeah and that's important tracks. if you rapping over your lyric stealing you've been in this game long enough shame on you and that's another reason why i can't stand going to these fucking open mics and these these damn shows because you'll have 10 people on the lineup right and about only two or nine we'll have damn near 20 on the lineup but anyways i'm just saying it's it's just it's a letdown when i'm I, you know I, i'm not in, i'm just not interested in karaoke i came to see a fucking mc Rap his shit. For sure, for sure. All right. Uh, <laughs> next MC, uh, number five, I'll have to go with Asthmatic because this morning I just saw him rapping on the Kill Tony show in front of Tucker Carlson and Joe Rogan. That was super crazy to see. So we're going to have to go with number five is uh, Asthmatic. Asthmatic. Um, let's see. Okay, number six. Uh, I'm trying to think of that other kid that I used to see him all the time. Uh, me and Keisha, I used to hang out with him and Keisha all the time. What was his name? It's a black dude. He's all about like your health and like he. I think he might even have dreads. Like he's super dope dude. Really big in the scene. Really good hip hop black dude. Damn. Well, I would have put you in the list, but I don't who know your damn ta- name. Who are you referring to? I don't even follow homie. I don't know his name, but I know he's pretty, pretty dope when it comes to like hip hop. But I don't know your name, son. So all right, we're gonna have to cut that. Um, we got five names so far, though. Uh, this is sad that I can't have five more. Um, Who else? You're not putting all the people you follow that's in in your fucking face all day. I just don't care enough. You know what I mean? I listen to what the fuck I <laughs> no, listen no, no. to. Uh, we, no, I got five more rappers. Give me a second. Give me a second. And the only reason why I like this list, because don't get me wrong, there are some rappers in the scene that's been doing this for a long time, but I'm just saying I see just some different types of growth. Like, yeah, we can have our legends here, like our, you know, our OGs here that have been, you know, um, but I'm talking about like, I'm gonna have to Who go. Who I see right. moving? Number Who? six. Number six. I'm gonna have to go with Sam. I am the MC. I fuck with Because I've been seeing him do some like a lot of work recently, and he's an OG, and he's an off the top, off the dome freestyler. He used right. to compete in Scribble Jam. Uh, he's won the 606 competitions at at Subterranean. We just did a show with him over at Bourbon. Mm-hmm. Um, it's long overdue. Shout out. Uh, Dean reference long overdue that I work with Sam I am I'll have to put Sam I am number six um, like bringing that real hip hop baby 
and not just on some friend shit, but on some real shit. Not no ego shit, but like, damn, they doing their thing out here. I'll have to throw in at number uh, at number seven the artist Fessa used to go by Professor Mike. He just dropped he just dropped a record I think with Black Man. Uh, who used to go by Sin Wins, aka Sin Cordell? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Fessa. Fessa just dropped a dope ass music video. He's dropped. He just actually dropped a few music videos, I think. But yeah, go check out Fessa. That's F E S S A. Used to go by Professor Mike. Shout out. Um, all right, now we got three more artists. Uh, I want to rap. Like who? Who out here putting in their work? Oh, Asha the way. Omega. Oh yes! Oh Omega. that shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely! Omega, shout out! Absolutely! Homegirl, that show we did with you at Bourbon, you went fucking crazy. Shout out Asha the Omega. Um, you know what I like about her hard. though? She that bringing hard. back that real fucking female hip hop. You know what I mean? Like that, that fucking Foxy Brown. Fucking I don't know. She's just bringing back real fucking hip hop, real bars, real energy. Um. She don't rap over lyrics. Like, she bringing that real heat. I, I'm almost saying she topping all these dudes out here. You know what I mean? She's, like, up there when it comes to this shit. Which brings me, because uh, Asha the Omega, and that reminds me to, I got to throw in here, uh, Microphone Misfits, Y'all, the group, yes. because uh, they've been they've been doing some dope shit. Been but about that business. They, but they're going to be at all pretty much the, the Chicago Comic Cons this summer. Uh, they're going to be at C2E2 performing, so and I, I guarantee you they're going to be selling comics, maybe action figures, other various merchandise. Mm-hmm. Go check out Microphone Misfits. So good. Uh, and two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we got Dean Akbar, White Noise, Young Tact, Double Entendre, Asthmatic, Sam I Am the MC, Fessa, Asha the Omega, The Microphone Misfits. And last, but certainly not least. And this least. is not in any specific yeah, yeah, this is order. Not it's any like y'all all badass. And by the way, this this ten isn't doesn't mean we're excluding any other. This is yeah, just ten all, rappers yeah. to look out for in right. Chicago. In our opinion, some of the top ten rappers to look out right. for in Chicago. But then, uh, last but certainly not least, probably want to try to throw another woman in here uh, for the sake of but diversity they can't be and feminism. Uh, they can't be, and baby. It's not you're just funny. About, they look good. You they know what I mean? Be, they look good. Uh, they can't be over their lyrics. Um, Cause Asha don't do that shit. No, definitely not. No, you're funny, babe. Uh, I guess we'll have to give it to Cash Go Crazy. She's been putting Fuck in a lot yeah. of work, doing a lot of shows. She's she does you know she does it the way the real MCs do it as mm-hmm. well. Uh, so yeah, Cash Go Crazy. That would be probably the tenth spot for this little list of ten rappers to look out for in Chicago. So we got Dean Akbar, White Noise, Young Tact, Double Entendre, Asthmatic, Sam I Am the MC, Fessa, Let's get it. Asha the Omega, The Microphone, Misfits, and Cash Go Crazy. Let's get it. Uh, now moving on. This is a this is a topic we know a lot about. Um, going forward. The best platform that is still the best platform, this is the grandmother platform, the grandfather platform, YouTube. YouTube YouTube, is the most important. Uh, It's hard to get monetized on YouTube, but YouTube pays more than any of the other platforms. Also, the thing about YouTube, which we just realized this recently, is that unfortunately, the way that TikTok and Facebook and Instagram work, no one's going to go back a year or two to check old posts on Facebook, old videos on IG, no. IG, old little parts on TikTok. Nobody does that, right? But YouTube, people are going to go back to old videos five years, 10, 15 years. They're going to pop up. Subscribe. And, you know, you might drop a video now, but it might get the most amount of views seven years from now because that's how YouTube works. It's a catalog. You know, it's like having access to a library of your favorite films except it's your favorite YouTube videos of whoever your favorite creator is that you're already subscribed to and following. So recording artists, rappers especially, if you want to grow in 2024. Get on that YouTube. I'm not even playing. And it's and it's um, because you also got to understand, I'm not as if I'm a consumer wanting to listen to your music. I'm not going to your fucking Instagram, guys, to listen to your music. I'm going to your YouTube. You know what I mean? To listen to music, to see your vlogs, to see what the fuck you've been up to. Music videos. Music you know. videos. Um, Instagram, it's just a collage. 
I don't know. It's, yeah, a, it's a collage. It's a highlight reel. I it's mean, just a you highlight might, reel. You might it's follow not... them just because you're interested, but we're like, you know, if you're going to be, if we're cooking or cleaning or doing dishes, if we're doing something, what are we using to play right. music in the background? Well, it's going to be a streamer of some sort, or it'll probably be YouTube on the TV, and we're going to be cycling through a playlist of your music and your catalog of videos. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that as a recording artist, well, we can't consume it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the less stuff you have on YouTube, we can only spend so much time right. on you as a recording artist on and YouTube. I, and I don't get me wrong. I do. Hey, I I look around and, and not enough of you guys are utilizing your fucking YouTubes. You know what Seriously, I mean? Seriously, especially we Chicago artists, stuff in less Chicago than four rappers. Years. In less than four years, we're at this level of you know 962 I mean? subs. I've done 155,000 views. And we've done He's over five viral. over five hundred videos. Yeah, fi over five hundred. And and the, this is my thing too. It's not even. Oh, every video don't have to be a damn music video either, y'all. Like, it can be a YouTube, blog. It can be a part. Anything. It can be a recap. It can be a promo. Consumer, I want to get teaser, to know you. It can be a trailer. Sit your ass down and interview yourself. It can be an interview. Anything. We want to know who you are as a as an artist. So it just can't solely be music videos either because that's kind of just putting yourself in a box. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Util uh, utilize your YouTube. Think of it as it's your television. Yes. So it's your programming, your own television shows yeah. and, and your own channel mm -hmm. based off who you are as a, as an artist and a brand. So I'm Wilhelm Duke. I'm the Swedish American rapper. So if you come to my YouTube, some of the things you're going to see, obviously, is like this podcast, right. Dukes and Duchesses, because as Wilhelm Duke, I want to be curating the television shows of my own YouTube channel. One of those shows being this podcast right here. Be and, what you want to see. And that gives people an incentive to want to go listen to my music because it's like, oh, that podcast he did was cool. Maybe I liked some of the things he was talking about or some of the content that they were reacting to or mm -hmm. that they were delving into. And because that piece of whatever struck me well now i want to go listen to his music whereas if all i had was just the music it'll probably be a little harder to discover back me. in my day and i say back in my day because i'm a little older than y'all young folks out there um you just weren't one thing you know what i mean if you were a singer you also was a dancer you was a you was an actress you was a model i think rappers don't be afraid to expand a little bit in what you like you know what i mean and kind of introduce that into your youtube channel world like if you like i know a rapper that's a skateboarder so he includes a lot of skateboarding and a lot of his stuff so he might go from rap to teaching y'all how to do a kickflip using his rap you know what i mean it's expanding what you already have and just not being just one-sided well yeah i mean i i think Throughout all time, there's there's been people that are one-dimensional and people that are multi-dimensional. But basically, you know, what the Duchess is saying is don't be one-dimensional. Utilize your other skills and traits because if you're out here just trying to be a rapper, you're only going to get so far. If all you can do is rap, I mean, you, you can't got, act, you can't you, dance, you can't do shit, well, you can't do... I mean, technical skills, like, all you can do is rap, but, like, what else can you do? Like, can you do your own videos? Do you understand you... management? Do you understand, like... What do you understand about using graphic a computer, design. files, graphic design? Like, what can you do in the music business besides just rap? Like, we're not even t talking, like, are you multi-talented? Right. Sure, like, a lot of people can rap, dance, act, sing. But, like, can you write your own bio? You right. know what I mean? Can you can do you your own EPK? Can you formulate an email correctly? Right. Uh, can you come up with a business plan for something? Right. Can you come up with your own business plan for your own business, a proposal? Can you... Can you design a marketing plan for six months for right. your rollout? Do you, can you do your own merch? Like, there's so many different things, Just right? So it's more. like if you can only rap in 2024, gonna it's going to take a while for you to get there because you're going to have to pay for everything. You're going to have to outsource for everything. Um be confident. You know, be, be confident, confident in yourself. And, and, you don't need and, to outsource and it's not just, anything. You're, you're not just good at rapping. There's something else that you're capable of doing right. that you can integrate. With, but I, what with I've learned over music. the years, rappers ain't trying to learn shit, though. Y'all ain't trying to. But it I'm seems saying, like it a lot of rappers. Yeah, yeah. A lot of rappers aren't lazy. Trying, yeah. It's just lazy shit. But I'm just saying, like, what even it, when it comes to, like, cover arts or or just just setting up your own camera and shooting and then playing around with Premiere yourself. Like, don't be afraid 
because in the long run that's gonna serve you that's why yeah, yeah. when COVID learning those hit, skills is very when important. COVID hit I took what I learned from university because I graduated in media, media communications and I was like Eric you need to stop waiting on somebody to do a, a video because dude was waiting sometimes six months for a motherfucker. So then we shot our edit. we shot our own music video. So I was just like, you know what? I used to shoot videos in college. Why don't we just do our own thing? And the first music video that we shot, we didn't even edit it. We outsourced uh, to a homie. Samson, to, you're dope. We outsourced to a homie to edit. And then after that first one, then after that, we were like, well, you know, we can edit this too. So um, YouTube University. YouTube set, University. If set, you don't you, know something, don't be afraid to right. look it up. And sit your ass down and literally that's how I'm literally coming up every week with some new new thing that I learned. You know what I mean? Because right. I'm not scared to sit my ass down and learn it. But what and like what set me as a part as a rapper comparatively to all the other rappers in the scene is like, well, I can shoot and edit my own videos. Right. So immediately like, OK, well, now I can grow a YouTube channel, whereas maybe other rappers are waiting on whoever else because they don't want to take the time to learn Premiere Pro to learn Final Cut, to learn editing, to learn After cutting, Effects, anything. After Effects, you know, visual effects. Once you get overlays, the hang of it, transitions, it's so easy, you know, um, yeah, I mean, definitely Basics. just shooting your own footage and being able to cut it should be a I mean, that's like a foundation right there. It's not that difficult. No. Uh, I'm not saying everybody can be a Cole Bennett with the special effects but why tomorrow. Not try? But, you know, within a few years, if, if you have practice shooting and editing your own stuff, you're going to get far. Mm -hmm. You're going to get definitely a, at least as far as we've come with the But with I the videos. also know people are scared to, like, look. Yeah, people are definitely scared to learn editing, for sure. They or don't want to take like the time. look like they don't know what. But it's okay. I, hey, I'll do that all day. Shit. And then you'll, you'll be looking at me like, damn, how'd she do that? Well, you saw how I did it. I just fucking did it. You know what I mean? And I was just putting out anything and eventually I got it and it looks really dope right now. Cause if you look at my videos from even, cause originally I was a writer. So I did, I wrote a lot of short films and I worked with my friend Julia in college and she would shoot, um, my scripts. So we worked together on a lot of that. Um, now that I'm older, I love more. Don't get me wrong. I am coming out with a series that I'm writing, but um, I'm going back to behind the camera more and it's just a lot of fun. And it's just like, you don't need to go to sp one specific person. You can be your own, your, um, your own videographer and don't also don't be afraid to outsource even editing. You know what I mean? If you want to cut your cost in half or if you want to cut the cost in what you're trying to get done, don't be afraid to do it yourself y'all. Cause in the long run, it's going to benefit you. Yeah. Learning more skills is always beneficial. No matter what. And the, and the camera um, that I would say is any type of Sony or any type of Canon. Yeah. And I, the DSLRs aren't bad. Um, wow. Now, last I like last I like. Uh, topic, which is something the Duchess wanted to uh, to, to talk about more. I but uh, um, Lizzo is apparently talking about quitting the music industry. And she's not going to be a recording artist anymore because she feels like she always gets attacked. Um, which, my in a way, she... Well, my thing is she didn't really because, OK, when all that stuff went down, when her dancers were like, OK, Lizzo is just not a good pe person. She's kind of like a female P. Diddy in a sense where she's touching. Well, she people was doing weird stuff. She was like doing some weird stuff with like bananas and banana and, peels. And when they and went to Asia, she was doing weird stuff. But I'm just saying like she did. She didn't necessarily. Well, she number one, she told that all those people were liars. So we were already like, OK. Um, usually when people know that they're wrong, but they don't want to admit that they're wrong, they'll be like, oh, I hear them, but blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? I hear what you're saying, and I feel sorry that you felt that way from me, but she never apologized for that. She just called them a bunch of liars and that we were supposed to forget. And um, so she said, I'm quitting music because she's getting a lot of hate. Honey, you're getting a lot of hate because, number one, um, I think that we need to distinguish fat phobia from People just not wanting, well, not being attracted to you or not wanting to see you in that light. I have a lot of big girl friends, you know what I mean? Like a lot of big guy friends, a lot of big girl friends. Um, I'm all for fucking body positivity and loving your skin and dressing the way you want. But I honestly think her marketing and branding and her team have kind of fucked her because um, don't get me wrong. I don't even want to see my my friend's ass all the time. You know what I mean? Like, 
if homegirl wants to wear a bikini, that's what she want to wear. But I'm saying Lizzo's whole brand is her walking around half naked. And it's not so much well, fat phobia that's as that's not her brand, but like well, for example, being, being at the being, being at the basketball game in a thong and shaking like yeah, would people have not cared if it was a a, a thinner, skinnier woman? Probably they wouldn't have cared as much. But it's still inappropriate in the sense that you know, if that was Megan the Stallion in a thong shaking ass in you know at a basketball game in front of little guy, little boys and right. little little girls, that still would have been inappropriate. Yeah, people probably would have been a little bit more okay with it because they're more attracted to her. Mm-hmm. But that still would have been inappropriate for anybody. And, so. it, and I think it's more than once that she's done that though. It, I just think there's a time and a place for that type of energy. But she seems to bring that energy everywhere she goes. You know what I mean? Like, it'll be like just a, an award show, but somehow her ass is in it. I'm sure, just saying, it's sure. just, I just think less, less, less booty, less um, that type of stuff, and just more music, homegirl. Like, we just got to get you a new stylist, um, yeah, some and new maybe, branding. And maybe just make music about whatever and not necessarily and about, just, like, your struggle of h- how you perceive right. your... Uh, your body i don't know but then again yeah. you know i'm not fat so i have no idea yeah but it's not uh, so much fat phobia it's just like people don't necessarily want to see it and not everybody's attracted to that you know what i mean it's not fat phobia it's just people not being attracted to it sometimes like i don't know all right now also i do want to talk about another thing and it's just going to be brief sorry baby i cut you off sexy red um not being able to go into that school but it's like um Number one, why is the school trying to host Sexy Red? I don't know if her... Are we just a bunch of creeps or what? Like, her music is not for children, but she's gonna supposed to be going to schools. And she's right. smelling so like Right, so the, the rap artist Sexy Red pulled up to a school, and she gets out of the car, and she was clearly hotboxing cannabis, and she smelled like cannabis, and then the school was like, sorry, you can't come in and do your little, you know, presentation or performance or assembly for the students. And yeah, I mean, basically the question is who in the F is booking a sexy red to perform in front of children for that matter? Who's booking a little Nas X to perform in front of children? Like none of these people make kid friendly music. If you're going to be booking these people, then like, why can't you book Jack Black? I well, love him. <laughs> why can't you book someone like a Wilhelm Duke yeah. to like to perform for kids if you're booking like these types of folks? Anyways. Um, but yeah. That's all on Dukes and Duchess's podcast we'll for today. I am your Swedish American rapper, Wilhelm Duke. This is the first lady of the House of Duke, the Duchess, Candace Elise. Ciao, ciao, guys. And uh, see you next time on Dukes and Duchess. And, we'll, and you guys, we appreciate you. Like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Subscribe to the Wilhelm Duke YouTube channel. That's where all of the Dukes and Duchess's podcasts will be published. Again, thank you for your support. We're trying. We're ain't. We're not trying. We are. We are getting doing. a thousand subscribers and a million, or whatever the what four thousand minutes of watch time this year. That's what we're getting. Thank you so much Thank for all guys. of your love and support. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.